Assalamualaikum. Welcome to Libat Urus Pacu. These days when we hear people talk about the environment, they are referring to the overall condition of our planet. The air, the water, the plants and the animals as well as the physical environment that we live in. With that in mind, for today's Libat Urus Pacu, I have the pleasure to invite the Department of Environment Malaysia with its mission to ensure sustainable development in the process of nation building. Let's welcome our guest, Dr. Noor Hasni Matsari. Welcome, Doctor. Uh, the Deputy Director General of Environment Development. Uh, Dr. Hasni has more than 20 years working experience and she specializes in environmental forensic. Doctor, thank you. Yeah, for thank coming. you. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for having me here, uh, yeah, Point. And we would very much indeed to thank Maida for inviting Joe and to be part uh, in this program. It is our pleasure. Yeah. Doctor, can you tell us a bit of background of uh, DOE? So, for the establishment of the department, uh, I think this is based on the legal or the statutory element, which is uh, the legal is Environmental Quality Act 1974, uh, which was gazetted in March 1974, and it came into force in April 15, uh, 1975. So with that, I think we would like to explain a bit uh, okay. the function of okay. the department. Please. Uh, I think Department of Environment is a key agency uh, in managing the environmental management for the country. So focusing to prevent, eliminate, uh, control pollution and of course to the enhancement or the improvement of the environment. And all of this is with the purpose in accordance to the our law, okay. uh, the Amrita yeah, Quality definitely. Act 1974 and the regulations underneath. So by focusing on the compliance, I think both the point and non-point, I think uh, the sources that generate industrial effluent, for instance, the sewage, yeah. the air pollutant yeah. substances, noise, <laughs> as well as toxic waste management, uh, I think in Malaysia we call it schedules okay. and the development of project which categorized as prescribed activities okay. under EIE. Okay. Uh, so those are the whole things related to DOE. Okay. We are the agency that responsible of implementing the resolutions decided through international environmental conventions too, such as uh, the participations of DOE in Vienna Convention that protect the ozone layer and we also the party to the Montreal Protocol, the Basel Convention which are focusing on the transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal and also there are many uh, successful bilateral and multilateral cooperation that we are having with them uh, especially Singapore, Indonesia okay. and, and, and other countries as well. Those are very important collaborations between our countries and our partners' countries as well. Ah, yes. So I think uh, since we see the words of environment is not explicitly mentioned in the constitution, so that's why I think we, for Malaysia at that particular time, environment is a very new subject that we introduced. Yes. So that's why I think it's about time for us to enhance and elevate the words environment for Malaysia. Okay. How big hmm. is the uh, Department of uh, Environment, environment yeah, in the uh, country? Okay. But the core service of the department uh, was carried out by the divisions uh, at the headquarters in Putrajaya uh, and we have at least 13 DOE states and 23 branch officers uh, throughout the country. So they do hmm. enforcement work as well? Yes, I think the focus is on the enforcement okay. as well as acting as uh, advisory services to the state government okay. as well as the local authority. Um, in MIDA, when we approve companies in the manufacturing sectors and when they have the manufacturing license, then they need to obtain the IE, uh, EIA yeah, 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 exactly. from the OE. Yes. So why EIA is important for manufacturing companies? You can elaborate, Dr. Uh, okay, I think before we jump into EIA, I think I need to explain a bit about the EIA. Okay. Um, not all the manufacturing license industry need to get EIA. Okay. Uh, some not of them, companies. not not all company, but they have to comply with the EQA. Okay. And we all, in many instances, we give advice to this company which is not subjected to EIA. Okay. okay, so I think uh, we have to understand about the 
what are the legal requirement okay. stipulated in the law. law. Okay, uh, this study is being uh, prescribed as a review to be made by DOE under the activities listed environmental quality prescribed activity EIE order 2015. So, and through the EIE process, the most of the environmental suitable options from various perspectives such as the site, yeah. what types of manufacturing okay. technology mm -hmm. that they want to embark, okay. what kind of resources mm -hmm. they want to involve and the most important thing is the mitigation measures with regards to the environmental matters okay. uh, to be identified at the early stage. Okay. So as a consequences, not only the positive impacts uh, to be maximised but the adverse and damaging impact also mm. could be addressed. And this is to mitigate the costly remedial mm. measures uh, to be prevented and reduced. So planning mm. and mm. design is very vital for the EIA yeah, study, yeah, uh, for the companies to adhere to. Yes, that is very important. I think uh, all the project proponents must understand that they have to set a right footing first before they embark to the journey of operation in Malaysia. So, uh, this comes to my next question, Doctor. Okay. What expect the companies should pay attention before applying the EIA? Uh, okay. I think it has to go back to the requirement of the law. So, in Malaysia, uh, EIA is a statutory requirement for activities which been prescribed or stipulated under Section 34A of EQA. Okay. And this Section 34A uh, stipulates that any person mm -hmm intending to carry out any of the prescribed activities is required to appoint a qualified person. Okay, yeah. So this qualified person is actually a consultant, mm -hmm. uh, accredited consultant to conduct the EIA and they have to submit a valid report, not a report, a valid <laughs> report, report to the Director General of Environment. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the, the set of footing focuses for EIA is very essential where the project owner should check, right? What are the requirements needed and what are the criteria set by DOE which are already stipulated in our guidelines? Okay. So, then you can explain to us the key components of the EIA study. So, the key components, components. Uh, of the study, uh, I think we have to understand. Uh, the EIA is a planning tool. So, from the slides that have been projected, uh, during the, we have to understand that the planning, the project information, the project uh, siting, uh, the baseline information, mitigation measures, monitoring and management as well as the impact and evaluation need to be addressed. Uh, so the planning and design for pollution control system must also be incorporated uh, in the uh, earliest possible phase. This is to ensure that the compliance to be set from the very beginning and they are able to understand how best to tackle the environmental matters uh, for their operation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, do you receive a lot of uh, requests uh, for advisory for companies that is intending to set up their operations in Malaysia? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, actually, when we we welcome any parties to seek advice from DOE, it can they can come to through Maida also. Yeah, Thank you very yeah. much in that. <laughs> and they also can come straight to DOE in okay. HQ. We have a special division. Uh, advising them, uh, we call it uh, assessment division. Uh, okay. We have a couple of uh, experts there, and we also a representative of the states under okay. development. Where when we assess the report, we have been carry out. One is from HQ, the other one is from the states. Okay, so but the most important thing for the project proponent for industry, for for instance they have to identify uh, the proper sighting okay. uh, and identification and selection. This okay. is very important. And nowadays, we receive a lots of complaints and we see a lots of issue has been raised up where the sighting is incorrect, where there are lots of pollution uh, has been occurred, right? So, the project must have sufficient details uh, in ensuring that the pace is good and right from the very beginning. Yeah. 
okay. and with the sufficient information the decision making through this EIA okay. uh, is very essential and it could also sometimes we ask them to furnish the information of detailed design uh, of their pollution control system and also uh, some of the elements of the mitigation okay. measures uh, uh, that to be put in the EIA report. Okay. It looks like there's mm. a lot of things that the companies need to do before they can get the EIA uh, 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 approval. Actually, it doesn't, uh, it's not that much. Only the components that need to understand. So normally by appointing the consultant, okay, yeah. the consultant should advise them well. And this consultant is being enforced under our legal so it's accredited to accredited to, to DOE, DOE. Okay. and this is being legalized under our provisions of the law. Okay, so the validations of the EIE is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can mm -hmm. find all this list of consultants in your website. Also. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And in okay. fact, uh, the they can also go and browse through according to the disciplines they are expert. In okay. and also the subject matters okay. uh, that they are expert in. Okay. So I think uh, some project proponent might have uh, schedules expert. Some project might want yeah. uh, have to embark the water pollution expert. Yeah, uh, so those are the list that has been uh, in our yeah. our list. Okay. Okay. Great, great. Mm. Okay. So I think the first this uh, again when I talk about the citing, citing uh, yeah. point. So the first criterion in siting of industry activity is very important. So this is ensure that they are located at the gazetted yeah, industrial yeah, area. Yeah. So yeah. that is very important. Yeah. And this is stipulated uh, in the structure plans and local plans. Okay. So the siting must be right and the compatibility of the industry That's also okay. must be right. So but we understand that uh, due to the limited and expensive land, issues and in line with the development of the latest technology, DOE has issued um, a special guidelines in 2017 that document the latest reference for the industrial placement uh, in the existing industrial area, which okay. this document uh, emphasizes to evaluate the self-assessment of all the stakeholders such as manufacturers, okay. local authorities, government and the public. I think we have a lot of cases recently where we found out there are a lot of incorrect sighting where leads to the not enough buffer okay. uh, that has been made to the uh, existing of the industry and some of the industry has illegally placed yeah. at the buffer zone uh, or the repair and reserve which is not uh, legal lies okay. under the local authority. Okay. We talk about the processing mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, procedures are also different in a sense that not the quality of the assessment okay. but the way of assess, assessing. Mm -hmm. So EIA Schedule 1 will be reviewed by DOE State Office okay. whereas uh, the process will undertake at least within 5 weeks or 25 okay. working days. However, for EIA Schedule 2, it will be reviewed by DOE Headquarters and should be completed within the client charter of 12 weeks or 60 days. So this EIA, as again I've been mentioned uh, 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 before, pre previously, that shall be carried out by the qualified the persons person, or okay. qualified consultants who hold a valid registration with the DOE as stipulated under the Section 34A uh, of the EQA 1974. At least 21 prescribed activities uh, in EIA order 2015 uh, of the first schedule. Okay. So when we talk about industry, right, there are stipulated clearly in the activity 6. And of course, uh, I think there are also involved activity 9, petroleum, uh, activity related to the waste treatment and disposal, okay. activity 14. And I think for the schedule 2, there are at least 17 uh, ac prescribed activities where industry has been clearly stated in the activity 6 and some industry that related specifically mentioning on the petroleum yes. is being prescribed as activity 9 mm -hmm. in schedule 2. 
I think and the most important thing also for industry, they have to have a good waste treatment and disposal yeah. facilities. So that falls under activity 14, 14. of okay. Schedule 2. Okay. Doctor, uh, what are the facilitation uh, given by DOE in times like this with the COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, uh, I think in effort to help stimulating the economy during this COVID-19 pandemic, we also part uh, to be involved in assisting the government in terms of facilitating the services provided uh, to the industry, including the developments of project subject to A, for instance. And, and of course, uh, we are going over, moving forward to have more digitalization mm -hmm. of DOE. Okay. So, but for the case of VIA, I think this is very important because this is the very crucial things that has been embarked during this COVID-19. So, DOE has taken initiative to establish an EIE Improvement Protein Committee okay. uh, look to improve the existing EIE report evaluation process. And we also want to ensure that good quality EIE report could be addressed in addressing the critical issue. And finally, can be used as planning tool for decision making. Okay. So, how we do that? So, there are three, at least three new and easy to obtain. We call it quick win, okay. improvement that we had introduced and just applied on the last 1st September of 2020. This is to strengthening the EIA report processing procedures, helping the project proponent which cannot come to the OE mm -hmm. and of course helping the pro project proponent to expedite the whole of the process in obtaining, obtaining their license and approval. Okay. So, the three elements uh, that being subjected to DOE, first, the submission and the distribution of the terms of reference, uh, EIA, uh, from the documents to the digital form. This is to, mini first, we minimize the hard copy distribution to the stakeholders. The second one is strengthening the public engagement dissemination. Okay of interactive information through online platform. So this method will enhance the understanding and involvement of the public in giving opinions related to development pro proposal. So we already uh, done it in sense that every state have their own special address yes. in submitting the EIA. Okay. Okay. And the third one is to restructuring the executive summary of the whole of the EIA where the presentations of executive summary of the EIA report has focusing more on the information through the infographic form hmm. okay, rather than the narrative okay. one and this is very much indeed uh, to, under to make public understand, understand more okay. and focusing the essential issue mm -hmm. for this development proposal. Okay. So the quick way improvements are formulated actually to improve accessibility and disseminations of information digitally that easy to understand, more interactive and have high impact towards the stakeholders and the public. Thank you very much Dr. Asni. Mm. And I'm sure the viewers out there will find this very useful. And we welcome comments and any inquiries. Please email to pachu at maida.gov.my. So I will end this, our tagline for today, Dr. Yes, uh, alam kita, kita tanggung, tanggung jawab, jawab bersama. bersama. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. Debat Urus Pacu with DOE will be added in two segments. Segment 1, focus on EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment. Segment 2, we focus on the scheduled ways and hazardous ways. So stay tuned for segment 2. Thank you.